first class requirement number two. Using a compass, complete an orienteering course that covers at least one mile. And one that requires measuring the height and or width of designated items, such as a tree, tower, canyon, or ditch. Orienteering. Is it a way to have fun while you practice your map and compass skills? Or is it a challenging competitive sport? Actually, it's both. On an orienteering course, you and your team are given one or more destination points on a map. Using your map and compass, you navigate your route to the first destination, where you sign in or document your arrival in some way. Then you plot the next leg of your course before heading out again. The objective can be speed, accuracy, or both. However you approach it, orienteering is a surefire way to get better at reading maps, picking routes, and using a compass. And it's not a bad way to stay in shape. Okay, now you know what orienteering is, so let's look at some of the skills you'll need to use while you're out there. You'll need to measure distance accurately, and guess what? You're standing right on top of your best tools for that purpose, your own two feet. Over here, I've measured off a 100 meter distance, and using my normal stride, We'll see just how many steps I take to cover the 100 meters. See you at the other end. 129, 130, there. It took me 130 strides to cover 100 meters. So, when I arrive on the orienteering course, I can look at my map, see that I need to go 500 meters that way, and I know I should cover that distance in just about, let's do the math, 650 paces. Ta-da! Want a quick way to figure out the length of a hike? Lay a string on a map so it follows all the twists and turns of your route. Then straighten the string out and measure it on the map's distance scale to figure out the distance. Let's say you've been hiking a while and you come to a rock cliff. Pretend that tree over there is the cliff. You want to know just how tall the cliff, or in this case the tree, is, so you send your friend over to stand beside it. You already know he's five feet tall. About five feet and half an inch. Okay, okay. Five feet, one half inch. We'll just say it's five feet to keep it simple. Now, take a straight stick. Hold the stick up at arm's length. Close one eye and sight over the stick so the top of the stick lines up with the top of his head. Use your thumb to mark the base of the tree. Now this measurement represents my friend's height. That's five feet. Let's see how many of these measurements it takes to fit into the total height of the tree. One for my friend, then two, three, four, four! Do the math, and we see that the tree, or the cliff, is approximately 20 feet. Another way to measure height is called the felling method. You use a stick on this one, too. Line up the top of the stick with the top of the tree. Put your thumb at its base. Keeping your thumb on the base of the tree, swing the stick over 90 degrees like the tree was falling. Timber! <laughs> After all, they do call it the felling method. Now, mark where the tip of the stick hits the ground. The distance from there to the base of the tree is the same as the tree's height. You always carry a set of measuring tools with you. It's yourself. Take a ruler or a yardstick and measure your arm span arm reach, hand span, finger length, foot length, and your height. Then, next time you want to know the length of a fish you caught, or the diameter of a tree, you, yourself, are the yardstick. Sometimes, you need to know how wide something is. Let's say this ditch is a raging river, and you want to know how far it is to the other side. You could use the salute method. Stand on the shore, hold your hand on your forehead in a level salute. Then move it down until the front edge seems to be touching the opposite shore. Hold that position, make a quarter turn to your side, and mark where the front edge of your hand seems to touch the ground. Measure that distance, and that's the width of the river. Your Boy Scout handbook also has detailed descriptions of other methods for measuring widths, like the stick method and the compass method. The best way to master these skills is to practice them in locations where you can step off the actual width of something and double check the accuracy of your estimates without actually crossing a raging river. That's first class requirement number two. Use a compass to complete an orienteering course of one mile or more. And measure the height and width of designated objects on that course.